Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward. We are smack dab in the middle of day two's wall-to-wall, -wall, back to back coverage with great guests. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. We would like to welcome back to the show, Rocky Solomon. She is the Be Business Intelligent Automation Lead at Eversource Energy. Welcome, Rocky. You're Rebecca. And uh, Jamal Stanford, the Senior Manager at, at EY. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, very happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. So you are both very close partners working hand in glove. But Rocky, why don't you start by talking a little bit about maybe the problem you were trying to solve and, and how the automation journey kicked off. Yeah, so our automation journey at Eversource began with a need to handle a lot of backlogs. So we had processes that would um, stack up for quite a bit of time and ultimately um, were costing us a bit of money, leaving about $1.2 million on the table in a bad debt uh, process that we could not get to. And so um, automation, that was our introduction into automation. How can we get through this backlog? How can we look up accounts where we can transfer the balances instead of writing them off? And our introduction was a bot. We did a small uh, proof of concept and then we scaled from there. So our introduction is how do we get through all of these backlogs? How do we reduce overtime? How do we reduce the burden on our employees? Because it's frustrating when you see work piling up. I mean, that's, that's frustrating. So we were looking at it not just from a cost savings or bad debt reduction perspective, but what can we do to make it easier for our employees? And that's when we partnered with Ernst & Young to do that proof of concept and then begin our automation journey by building the foundational capability and the governance to support it. And that's what has allowed us to scale. So, Rocky, I got a little gripe with you since I'm an Eversource customer. Uh oh, everyone has. A and I installed, <laughs> I installed a generator, and and I'm like dying to use this thing because my wife Deb is like, why do we need this? It's ugly. I'm like, you watch. Yeah. And so anyway, we lost power for like three minutes. The thing kicked on. I was like, yes. And then the power came back on. So didn't even get to really use it. Uh, yeah, well, that's frustrating. That's a momentary <laughs> outage actually that you had, right? So that was a momentary outage that occurred. Those are frustrating. And one of the things that we may get to talk about today is how we've leveraged these capabilities to address a momentary outage uh, challenge for our customers because we want to ensure reliability. So that experience that you're having, although you laugh no. about it, it's frustrating. I wanted a multi-day outage. Uh, I wasn't uh, clear. I was like, I, want want I got the, I got the <laughs> generator. <laughs> no, I'm good. All my neighbors would be like, can we come over? That's not nice. No, it's That's sorry. not nice. Sorry, no. no, but thank you for your service here. No. So, Jamal, tell us about what your activities are around automation and how you guys are working together. Yep, so in my role, I help clients at Eversource in this case identify ways to implement strategies and identify use cases, ways to implement AI and automation into the business processes. So my day to day is working with Rocky to have conversations with the various business domains within Eversource to under really understand their goals, objectives, and pain points. We typically always start with what the challenge is and then we back into, okay, what outcomes do we want to, to arrive at um, in using this technology? From there, we identify the specific capability that'll be used, whether that be RPA, chatbot, some form of advanced analytics, or a mix of all, of, of all right, to really address those challenges and, and drive, at those out, drive at the outcomes that the, the business domains are looking for. And, and Rocky, you told us last year, your automation journey started, I think, in 2018. 2017 was the proof of concept. 2018 is when we really launched yes, the foundational so you're capability. Well into it. Yes. Okay, so take us back to sort of where you've where you've come from and where you want to go. Oh my gosh, <laughs> um, it's exciting because we started with you know your kind of bread and butter robotic process automation, right? So hitting all of those back office processes with unattended automation. It's like all right, let's get the low hanging fruit and then let's you know go from there. We've also deployed robotic desktop automation, so attended front office automations that enable our customer service agents to uh, focus on their calls, their discussions with our customers 
while they've got bots in the background doing their thing, right? Like on demand, they're invoking these automations to work in real time while they're on the customer, um, on the phone with the customers. So cool. We've also introduced chat bots. So some of our CSRs can go into a chat bot and say, okay, give me the latest and greatest, whatever information they need, or retrieve something from their knowledge base. And right there at their fingertips, they have that. So those are three of the, the main ones that we've been um, uh, leveraging over the last few years. But we've also done process mining. And Jamal, if you want to like take that a little deeper, because that's pretty cool. The process mining has allowed us to get some granular data insights into processes. Why are things happening the way that they are? When are we veering from the way a process should be executed? So those are really cool um, tools as well that we've been leveraging. So Jamal. Yeah, please share yeah, with the audience. Away. Yeah, That's sure. So from a process mining standpoint, and with all the capabilities, we found ways to embed the work that we do into the transformation programs that Eversource has. In this case, they were going through a transformation within the operations organization, and as a result, uh, as fallout from the transformation, they found that they had issues with inspections specifically, right? But they didn't know what the root cause of the issues were. They didn't know if it was people, process, or a technology issue. We were able to come in and leverage process mining to give them greater transparency into the pro their process to help them identify areas where they could either apply automation, provide coaching to some of the folks that were completing the work, or you know, a need to, to, to change the process itself. So we're able to, to, to really give them that visibility to help some of the decisions that they would take after. So for the process mining layperson, how does that work? How do you discover something as amorphous and ever-changing as process and, 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 and how do you sort of determine that steady state and, and where you want to go from there? How, what, what role does the technology play? What role do humans play? Walk us through that if you would. So there's a component of me of working with the folks that do the work to understand the baseline of what they believe the process should be doing. From there, we take a deep dive into the data itself to understand the flow of data as transactions are completed and model that out itself, right? Uh, we then come with process mining where we're able to integrate with the systems and create various dashboard views that enable us to understand the flow of transactions as they're com being completed within the baseline process. As Rocky mentioned, we're also able to see variations where there's a deviation from what's expected and able to, to, to drive at the root cause of what caused that deviation itself. So, so it's really classic consulting work to say, okay, what's actually happening here? Observe it, document it, talk to everybody along the way, identify um, discrepancies, try to rationalize those, and then you vi help people visualize that and then say, okay, is this, do we have this right? And, and then you model it and say, maybe there's a better way to do it, uh, or there's some steps you can cut out, there's some re repetition. Yeah, I think one of the distinctions is, I think there are probably fewer interviews that are required. We're able to do this more in an automated fashion and, and leverage system data in a more effective way to, to gain that view of what's occurring, what should be occurring, and what can be done to address the challenges that are done. How does that work? Because you, you know the outcome and you can follow the data. Is that right? Is that essentially how you? Correct, we, we know what the quote unquote happy path is. Yeah. And we're able to see when there's deviations from it and when there are deviations, we have the data to say what actually occurred. Right. It starts with a hypothesis and then we test the hypothesis using process mining to determine whether or not right, it proved to be true or it proved to be false and what were the reasons behind that. And the human has the hypothesis. And the human, right. You, okay. right, the right. human has the hypothesis. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we are, yeah. are these processes documented anywhere like formally and are they kept up to date? Yeah. Like company policies and things like that? You know, that is a great question. <laughs> and as much as I don't want to air anyone's dirty laundry. No. No. Um, but, you know, keeping processes up to date it is a challenge yes. that many businesses have because as systems are upgraded, right, things, you know, a, a screen can change, a process might be eliminated or something could be added, and it's, you know, um, on the fly, it's like, okay, yep, we now need to do this and we don't need to do this, and you don't take the time to go back to the documentation because at that point, people are no longer relying on the documentation until you need the documentation, yeah, right. right? So part of our process with building any of these automated solutions is to step 
through these processes with the people who do the work. Their voices are just as important as you know the developers who are going to be coding and automation or whatever, right? So sitting side by side with the employees that are doing the work, either literally or virtually, so that we're understanding what what they're doing and being able to ask questions because it's through the dialogue that we are able to identify. Really, does this need to be automated? Should this be abolished instead of automated? Is there some other system that is already, you know, um, like the root cause of this particular exception that, you know, if we fix that, is that going to get rid of the problem? So you get that through discussion and dialogue with the people who do the work and the business process owners who own the work. We can't do any of this apart from that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be successful. Okay. So I want to hear about how customers are already seeing value from this journey, but also about those employees. I would like to hear how their lives have been changed for the better, ostensibly, because of because of the, this automation. Yeah, so let's start with the employees, because if it wasn't for our awesome employees, the, the satisfaction that our customers are getting in many areas of the work, of the bills that are coming going out the door, right, we wouldn't have that if it wasn't for the dedicated and awesome employees that we have. And so one of the things that our folks do is they raise things quickly. We have a pain point, this isn't working, we need to do something else, right? And so because they're comfortable giving voice to the process pain points that they're encountering, that gives us an opportunity to help solve it for them, right? So being engaged with them from the outset is also one of the things that has prevented Eversource from having this, you know, like kind of backlash of employees saying, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? You're getting rid of the work. No, you're actually gonna give us something that we want. You're gonna give us some relief, right? So by pre creating an atmosphere where our employees feel comfortable raising things, knowing that, hey, this could either be automated or my whole work here can change, but they're comfortable and confident in their leadership. Psychological safety. Yes, That's yes. Exactly. yes. Yeah. absolutely. They're comfortable and confident in their leadership, knowing that if this gets moved away, my work experience is going to be much better, <laughs> and I'm going to be able to do something that I actually like to do. And they're also able to focus on pain points for the customer. So when they're not burdened down with all this, you know, monotonous, you know, stuff, mind-numbing stuff, right? They're able to say, hey, you know what? This process here is causing a hiccup for our customers. Do you realize how many customers have to do a cancel rebuild because we're, we're doing A, B, and C? Or they're calling in looking for their bill because it's been delayed because, right, so our employees are at the forefront of that. They're the ones who are saying, hey, we need to do some, some automation or some process improvement here so that our customer experience is better. And because of that, a byproduct of that is customer bills are going out the door accurately and timely based on the input from our employees and based on us being able to tackle the things that they're bringing to us. You've obviously done a good job with this. You told us last year that the response was overwhelmingly positive and they were happy to share their ideas. The key, it seems to me, in looking through this is you got the employees involved yes. in the decisions. Uh, and then you gave us some metrics. You delivered over 150 automated solutions yes. that have not only given back to Eversource, but over 400,000 hours of workforce capacity digitally. Yeah. And you're now leveraging those automations. You're probably taking this to new levels. Yes. I'm dying to hear about the AI factory. That's like <laughs> the coolest new phrase. Jensen, Nancy's <laughs> it about. Uh, you know, Del, Michael Dell's using it, and Antonio Neri, all the execs. And but it's it's exciting to hear. Actually, you're implementing a so-called AI factory. What's that all about? Yep. So I, I can take this. So I think as Rocky's talk earlier on the main stage, as, as was mentioned, having had a strong foundation with the automation program, having gone through the governance and identifying ways to mitigate any potential risk, uh, evaluate value, things of that sort, naturally a lot have enabled us to transition and incorporate additional technologies over time, including those of process mining, virtual agents, but additionally, we've deployed generative AI, leveraging the same governance framework that we've had before, right? We, um, although it's a new technology, rather than needing to recreate the will, we're able to make adjustments to the existing framework that we have in place to quickly adopt new capabilities and really enable the, the speed to value associated with, with implementing the technology itself. Um, I'll let Rocky speak to one of our, our biggest AI use cases, but we're, we're able to find ways to, to more integrate, integrate this in the business process and drive increased value um, as a result. I don't know which one's the biggest because there's so many. For me, every 
every automated solution, whether it's leveraging AI, whether it's leveraging advanced analytics, they're all big because they're all following a business challenge. If there wasn't a business problem that we needed to solve, we wouldn't be implementing it. So for me, they're all big. So I'm not sure which one to no. all talk about. <laughs> however, 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 no, they're, they're no, oh, you're right, you're in, right. in, in Austin, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm kidding. But um, so we've done, we've actually won an award recently for a sustained outage prediction model. Um, and that's leveraging AI. And the foundational platform also, you know, has bots that are doing work, but work behind the scenes. And so to what you were talking about earlier, David, with having that momentary outage, we actually built a solution that identifies momentary outages and then based on understanding the history of momentary outages on the circuit, we're then looking and determining what is the likelihood of a sustained outage more than your three minutes or your five minutes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the likelihood of a sustained outage taking place and what can we do to stop that so that our customers aren't impacted by a long duration outage, right? So that, that solution, which is an incredible incredible solution. We developed it, I believe, in like eight weeks. And so it's it's only about eight months young, but we've prevented our customers, over 100,000 customers from having outages that would have impacted them based on the predictions that this AI model is pushing out, right? So that's just, that's a huge win for our customers. It's a huge win as well for us as a company because we want to provide reliable service. We want to prevent our customers from having to pick up that phone and call us because we fail to meet that basic need of theirs, right, for electricity. So by innovating, by pulling all of these different capabilities together and figuring out what can we do to solve that challenge, to solve that reliability challenge, that's one of the things that we're doing. We've also applied generative AI to help make it easier for our employees to access key resources, so to access standards and requirements necessary to do their job. We implemented a generative AI conversation in a chat bot. So once again, at their fingertips, in their own natural language, they can ask a question and receive the results without having to go through painstaking searches, right, of these data and these document repositories. Fun. Interesting. So, so, so what's next? I mean, already you've talked about so many incredible innovations that, I mean, as, as customers, both of us, uh, I'm grateful for, certainly. Um, what, what, what do you see as the future? So I think as Rocky's mentioned, right, there's a mindset towards solving a business challenge, an outcome value-based approach that's taken, and that dictates the technologies that br that's brought in. With that said, I see us, I see Eversource being able to adopt additional capabilities, um, agentic AI being one, um, the topic of the conference, and yep. one that I think will add significant value in terms of being able to provide deeper automation and equip employees with you know, more agents, more similar to the one that Rocky mentioned, right? That can do even more. Um, I think as as the pro, as we look for the program, we'll we'll look to adopt some of those new capabilities, and, and there'll be even more that we're, we're able to offer to the organization and the cus and customers as well. Excellent. Excellent. From my perspective, we're just going to keep doing more awesome stuff, right? So in response to the challenges that come up, whether it's for our customers or something from our employees. We're going to figure out a way to solve it using all of the capabilities at our disposal. And that toolkit, right, is growing, is, exp is expanding. And so we're just going to continue to do more of the same awesomeness, right, and delivering value, making things easier for our employees, and making things better for our customers. All right. I like the vision. I like it. Stamp of approval. Thanks, you guys. Rocky and Jamal, thank you so, both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Well, I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.